was the day that you said, you know what, I'm going full fledged? Uh, I would have to say when um, I switched careers, mm -hmm. um, I had become very bored in. And I, I don't know, corporate, I hate using that kind of word and labeling it, but when I was working in corporate America, um, I didn't have time to do anything I wanted to do. You know what I mean? As far as my brand and music, it was very hard because mm -hmm. of my mental energy was just so into that and trying to be who they wanted me to be, like their trophy, because I was the only black woman in the company. Mm -hmm. um, I was natural, and just me being who I was, it was just very draining for me. Um, and I had become very bored, and this was prior to the shift. And um, I ended up getting let go from the job. Okay. And, you know, I'm like, well, I was supposed to quit y'all. Y'all were supposed to quit me, <laughs> quit but I me. Quit, y'all quit me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that was, um, that was it for me. And I, I went through a season, like, a, a, a couple of months where I wasn't working. I'm like, well, I need something to do. Um, so, you know, just to, to put a plug there, a pretty big deal is my brand is my music mm -hmm. it's my singing career it's my speaking engagements it's like everything that's me mm -hmm. uh so with that I, I took on more engagements and singing and i'm like you know people um have an expectation of me um and that's not in a negative way like they look for me they want me so mm -hmm. why not give them what they want so I yeah because your energy is just like everything thank so people you. are looking for that energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's what you know thank you and i appreciate that because i still struggle with that too mm -hmm. but um i took that shift like that was god because i always wanted to work um a portion of a pretty big deal is my mentor program mm -hmm. and to I, how can i mentor girls and children if i'm not in that capacity of working with them or having that experience mm -hmm. with them so that shift in the in the job circuit you know, definitely propelled me to like, you know, now right. you have the time and you have the resources and you have the experience. Because now it's like coming all together. It's all working together yeah. without me having to do anything extra. You know, right. Besides. Is that something like you prayed about or you meditating on? Because um, I know like, you know, you're into that or, you know, prayer meditation yeah. and like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, wh whatever the vibe is, yeah. that's where I'm right. Right, whatever the energy <laughs> draws. You know, I pull from everything, yeah. you know. A lot of people ask me that like, I still believe and trust in God and I, I do pray, mm -hmm. um, not as much as I probably should, but mm -hmm. I do pray. Um, and whatever my energy, whatever feels good to me, mm -hmm. and feels right. You Where know? did that come from? Experience. Okay. Um, you know, I've been in church and grew up in church all my life, but I've always been different. You know, um, I've always questioned everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just the analytical part of me. You know, I remember asking my uncle. You know, God created the heavens and the earth. Who created God? Like, I really want to know mm -hmm. and break down this thing so I'll have a better understanding of it. And, and trusting God and having faith, you know, that's a big, that's probably one of the most pivotal points of my journey is um, trusting God. You know, I, I, I struggle with even sharing that because mm -hmm. I, I never want to influence someone else's journey. But I have to be honest about mine. Mm -hmm. um, I struggle with that with faith mm -hmm. because I believe and trust God but I also like I'm human I have to make sure my bills are paid right, and, right. you know yeah. all those things and I've been there where you know I'm just gonna step out on faith and pay this mm -hmm. and I'm gonna pay my tithes and then you well, know what you say do you think is something in your upbringing that kind of shifted you away from trusting God would it be your mm -hmm. upbringing or would it be a, a person or experience that happened to you um, in the church mm -hmm. setting mm -hmm. that's shifted right, right your communication with God definitely um there's been many <laughs> you know <laughs> from childhood you know just seeing different contradictions mm -hmm. and seeing you know things as children you know but I couldn't question that but like mm -hmm. I said I always come back to my adult life and there's definitely been some experiences that I've gone through where you know I'm really trying to walk this thing for real I'm mm -hmm. not perfect and I know no one else is but to see um I just the distractions it, mm -hmm. it just became too distracting for me because okay. I'm really you know where I'm you know falling short and I'm really really trying to get it together I don't need that pull against me mm -hmm. keeping me where I am so that's what ultimately pulled me away I don't I don't consider myself being attached to organized religion anymore mm -hmm. because um, I want that straight and narrow if God is everywhere then he can be my God at home mm -hmm. <laughs> you know wherever I choose to 
worship and pray and meditate I just didn't need the distractions and not to knock anybody else but mm -hmm. um, I just didn't feel like everyone was on the same page or level as I was just mm -hmm. trying to really work through this thing and live and treat people right mm -hmm. you know I felt um, I like that you said treat people though mm -hmm. because I think um, you know as believers we focus more on tradition mm -hmm. than the treatment yes Yes, and I mean, and I, and so I think you know it's getting to a place because of the way the world is mm -hmm. now, like you really can't fake it. Right? Like you really have to. The treatment is 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 far more yes. important than the yes. tradition. You, have you know, to you got to balance it exactly. out. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that's one thing about me. You know, like I always say, and I, I and I'm trying to get to the point where I stop giving that disclaimer. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect because we all know that you know we're not. But I'm genuine, mm -hmm. and. um and like you said, going back to that, I, just the energy. I know what I feel and what I get, the, the vibes I get from people. Mm -hmm. And I just don't, I didn't like that, you know, coming into a place that's supposed to be of healing and love and support and covering, I wasn't feeling that. Okay. You know, I felt the total opposite. Mm -hmm. So, Do you felt, think, do you think it will be, ever be a time where you will go back oh, into that man. setting? Oh, yeah. It's been heavy on me in this okay. season because you can't take away being amongst other people mm -hmm. and, and pulling those positive things from them. And I, I have been feeling that void lately. I just said this morning, like I need to figure out because my son plays in the church, mm -hmm. how I can go and get him to where he needs to go because I, I need that in my, in this season, mm -hmm. that worship and the music and, you know, because I love all that. But and, and because you're an artist, you're a yeah, singer. And sometimes yeah. I want, you know, I love singing R&B and country and all that, but sometimes I want to sing, you know, mm -hmm. praise to God and it gets boring at home. <laughs> By yourself, right. you know, with yeah. no music and stuff. So, I, I definitely this season have I have been meditating about that. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, what what is your experience like with being an artist? Where when did that start? Um. Ever since I, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and I know that's your cliche. roots are, are deep, and yeah. um, you know, from Memphis mm -hmm. to being here to Milwaukee. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, like, how did that come about? Actually, starting here in Milwaukee, you know, I went okay. to Jordan. So, mm -hmm. you know, I remember. Me and my cousin Shabria doing a duet, and that was what we were known for. <laughs> and then I would come back in the summer times and and sing, and um, but it became real. I never forget. I was in high school, and uh, music class, and we were doing the Temptations version of um, Silent Night, and okay. I did one of the solo parts, and everybody went crazy, and that's really? when it clicked for me. Like, wow, I really, I guess I really can sing mm -hmm. a little bit. So I started to really. Uh, take it seriously. Were you like scatting or were like you, no, you just, just you were singing? singing? You know, like church, yeah. you know, okay. just like the church, the soul <laughs> show. And uh, yeah, ever since then, you know, I still I still don't consider myself a solo artist mm -hmm. though. I I love background. Like yeah. I'll eat your background up. Yeah. But <laughs> just as And you know. you've connected and been a part of a lot of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I've sang uh Ty Tribbett, mm -hmm. um Elder Barge uh, Jay Holiday. Which uh, one was your favorite moment? And Ty we're not Tribbett. discrediting anybody. No, no, yeah, I had to say Ty Tribbett. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though I couldn't really keep up with his energy, he I is was, really <laughs> smart. He, he is really is lit. But it was just, you know, yeah, he was at my absolute favorite. And that's just who he is. Yeah, that's just who he is. Elder Barge was cool because you know, mm -hmm. like you know, I grew up listening to him. Jay Holiday was cool. Um, of his new age, mm -hmm. um, but I definitely connected with with Ty. How Tribbett. do you get those connections? Um, like, how do you get there? Um, I would Ty Tribute. I don't. Really, that was so long ago. I want to say um, I'm not sure about him. Um, but you know, doing R&B live mm -hmm. with Lena Cole, uh, definitely um, here in Milwaukee. Here in Milwaukee, okay. yeah. Here in Milwaukee, um, that that has been a great platform for me. I would have to say. Um, I started singing doing R&B live about eight years ago. Um, and that was through somebody else, and I just stay. I stuck. I went to do an anniversary show, and was stuck. They were like, "Yeah, you're part of the family now." Really? So yeah. that definitely opened a lot of doors mm -hmm. for me as a background singer and as El Renee, the the solo artist. What does singing do for you? Um, it empowers me. Okay. You know, it, it it it's therapy. You know, and it definitely helps um, gives me an outlet. Uh, and confidence and mm -hmm. all those things like that. Mm -hmm. So you say confidence, and when I think about you, I think about your brand, and when you talk about El Renee, mm -hmm. that's like where that confidence lies. Mm -hmm. And so you say, you know, I'm Lavanda, but then, yeah. you know, this is my purpose, El mm -hmm. Renee. Like, can you break that down. Um, and when I say confidence, it's like it's not 
heavy rooted. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people won't believe me when I say that, but I do. I do struggle with um, with just really standing in who I am. Mm -hmm. um, whereas we say we can't really depend on people. That's just my purpose. It lies in people. So I look to people for that okay. um, confirmation, mm -hmm. or you know, just to say, yeah, you're doing right. Mm -hmm. And if you know, so that is. Um, I struggle with that. Um, I know who I am. You know, I know what I can see the long run of where yeah, my purpose is. I think you is. know who you are. Yeah. I know it's like the in-between stages. Uh -huh. I do struggle with that. Um, so, LaVonda, when she is who she is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but El Renee is who I have to be. Like, mm -hmm. I can't, um, I don't know, I get kind of jumbled just trying to explain it because I know how it is in my head. But um, El Renee is fearless like that's who I have to, like you have to be her you have to be fearless you have to be bold and it's L your middle name L is my first name so Lavanda but instead of just writing the L I wrote it out it's E-L-L-E L, -L, -E. L Renee fancy Renee is the middle name fancy mm -hmm. I like that Thank creative you. you're creative it's in there somewhere yeah you're creative <laughs> and, I like that thank you thank mm. you and I you know like I can say I struggle with that because um and this was a part of my story I wasted a lot of time. I'm a huge procrastinator. And as I reflect over my life, you know, the last, I'd say, 15, 15 years or so, um, some things that I should have done a long time ago, mm -hmm. I didn't. Um, when I was trying to figure myself out and giving time and attention to other people. Um, so now as I have responsibilities and priorities, my brand and my purpose kind of gets pushed to the back burner because mm -hmm. now you got rent to pay and bills yeah. and you got a mouth to be so um all those things play a part in my journey and how i'm moving forward so mm -hmm. you have a son yes and he's also into music mm -hmm. he's a drummer yes yes he is a how did he get drummer. there and, his, and what's going on with him his dad is a drummer okay um so that was probably one of his biggest musical influences um and then growing up in Memphis, he, until he was like five, you know, he was always, I was in the choir. Daryl Pettis was drinking praise, so he was always at choir rehearsal. And of course, the same saying, he was beating on the drums mm -hmm. and the pillows, mm -hmm. but um, I got him a drum set when we moved here, and he would play, and I really could hear that he could play. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Chris Crane, uh, about three years ago, presented him with a scholarship to go to the Wisconsin Conservatory of Music. Mm -hmm. And for jazz drumming, so he's been there the last three years, and uh, he just performed Wednesday for a jazz combo, and he's performing Tuesday down at um, Bronzeville. And on, I love um, jazz. Yes. I'm gonna have to check oh, it out. Oh, he's so like Herbie Hancock, like he knows them all. Okay, yes, so, so he really like yes, been studying. Yes, like yeah. snarky puppy, like he's so different. Yeah, and so like he introduces me to people who I've never even heard of. Mm -hmm. That has to be a great, I would think, a great accomplishment and a great feeling as a mother. Yeah, it is. I look at him and I tell people, not just because he's mine, but because he's mine, like, he is such an awesome, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome kid. He's only 13 years old and he's so mannerable and, like I said, creative and self-sure. Like, he challenges me. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, like, we, we grew up on, don't ask me no questions, no, you know, you Correct. do what I say. Yeah, and I, you yeah. Know, but he, he challenged me, well, how can I do that if, you know, you tell me to be this person and speak my mind, I can't, so I'm like, okay, <laughs> but that's how, he's so, you know, he's so strong and yeah. assertive in that sense, but um, I'm very, I'm proud and blessed to be. What have you taught him that mm -hmm. you think that you see manifesting today? Oh, um, stay true to yourself and, and, and be responsible um, on what you do, on what you say. And um, never, never turn down from anything. And I, I see that. Like he, he works. Like he works in the church, and he's he has his own bank account, and he handles his own money. Okay. And um, like I said, he challenges me, but not in a disrespectful way. Mm -hmm. um, he, he even does that in respect. Well, can I ask you a question? Well, how mm -hmm. can you know? So um, even in that, and just you know, he cares about people. He has a heart for people. Like he'll let the window down and give his chip to a homeless person, okay. you know? So just love people, respect people, and don't have any expectations. But, you know, that's, that's probably one of the biggest things. He went through um, being bullied a few years ago. And I just had to tell him, you know, everyone 
doesn't have a heart or think like you. And that doesn't mean they're a bad person. Mm -hmm. It just may be something that they're going through in their lives is making them, mm -hmm. that empowers them to make you feel bad. But you still be kind and you still be nice to them. And so now he takes that and he gives and that yeah, to other he just kids. Give it to other, yeah. 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 He gives it to other kids. So I need you to tell me about El Renee Weekend. Okay. Elevation. Yeah. Like what? Shout out what to Patrice. We, yeah, what can we that. expect? <laughs> How do we become a part of it? Okay. Where did it come about? Okay. Um, this is a weekend yeah. experience. <laughs> it is. Um, in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee, yep. It's um My birthday is September the 18th. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll be celebrating the 20th through the 22nd. Um, the twentieth will be a paint and sip down at the RZ Gallery mm -hmm. uh, with Rob and Zena Smith. Um, that's just a fun, laid back. You know, um, we're still working on the theme of what we're going to actually paint, but um, just um, celebrating life and and love and just a pretty big, yeah. a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. You stepping out on faith? Yeah, I am. Oh, I am. Yeah. I, mean, I even say that nervously, like yeah. you know, I'm putting it out there, so I have to do it. You, you know? gotta do I it. Gotta do it. <laughs>